Welcome to Digital Asset News, the top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets, and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some pretty positive news despite what's going on in the market. So first up, looks like there is a little bit of hoarding of Bitcoin going on as more and more institutions and people are taking Bitcoin into cold storage. On top of that, we're going to take a look at a little question that we have to answer as far as U.S. citizens for taxing, where we can actually say, no, we have not uh, acquired any virtual currencies. And then we're going to talk about sticking to your plan. And finally, there's a nice new survey out that says that pretty much people don't know what the heck they're buying. So we'll take a look at all those things. But first, let's take a look what's going on in the market. So today it is uh, March 4th, 11 a.m. Houston, Texas time. And a uh, beautiful day here. Things are like 70 degrees. Can't beat this weather. Love it. So let's take a look at what we have as far as the market goes. So looks like we are uh, at Bitcoin again below 50,000. So we're going to take a look at an article where it talks about people just hoarding, but it doesn't really look that is what is going on. But I think I have a solution. Ethereum is down to 1590. Again, way down below its $2,000 mark. But uh, Hey, it's gone up a whopping 0.94% in the last hour, so watch out. Binance Coin, uh, down 2% over 24 hours. Cardano, down again 7%. And you have to remember, like I always talk about, uh, has anything fundamentally changed of any of these tokens? Uh, it is all the same thing, uh, just people selling and taking profit. So uh, not financial advice, but uh, this is a good time to uh, stock up on some little bit of a, a minor flash set. Polkadot, uh, down uh, 3%, 8% for, hey, 8% for XRP, watch out, good for them. Congratulations, XRP holders, you are in the green, uh, almost at 50 cents, pretty good, especially with the SEC, you know, bearing down on them and beating them to, uh, to a pulp uh, with what's going on there. Uh, Uniswap up 13%, I'd like to hear about that, uh, which is amazing because the fees are like outrageous, but what are you going to do? And then Theta is moving into the top 15, and we, we covered this yesterday. Sony, um, they are doing a, a new validator, or they're part of the validator nodes, and uh, now they have uh, Sony, they have connections with uh, YouTube, Gumi, all these great huge companies. And uh, I, again, I think Theta is going to be a sleeping giant uh, for what it is. I also think Cardano is going to be a sleeping giant, but uh, here we are. So that's really what's going on in the top 20. I'm sure there's some great things like VeChain up 10%. I think there was a new partnership that was announced. <laughs> I think there always is, but uh, well, uh, that's uh, what's going on. Kusama, 0.68. Anything great? That's nah, pretty much uh, the big stuff. Let's just take a look at some quick sentiment analysis to see what could go up in the next hour or so. And uh, Chili's. Hey, that's crazy. Chili's. We were just talking about this. Uh, I had on uh, uh, Alex Fazel from Swissborg. And it was one of the tokens that they actually have on Swissborg. I think Swissborg is the next uh, Voyager. You can check that video out, link at the end. But it uh, looks like it's going to go up 12%. Interesting. Uh, over the next hour, three, maybe three and a half, four uh, percent 4%. Uh, that's a 90% accuracy. So pretty good. Engine coin, another one I really should get into. I just haven't. 13%. Dent coin, also making it. Uh, Wrapped Terra. Man, one of the doing things. And then Telos, always in the top uh, 10 or so. Swissborg, the one we were talking about yesterday, 4%. And you can take a look at Trade the Chain. There's a link in the description. You can check that out. But uh, let's go into today's top story, shall we? So this one was pretty good. Um, this is from my man CJ uh, over at Market Rebellion. And it's uh, he shared this from Glassnode. And I thought it was interesting because... Let me see if I can uh, close th do a close-up. There we go. And if, what we're looking at here is this is from 2018 all the way to the present day. As we, as we scale in a little bit, I mean, if we can take a look at here, all this uh, green is all the different uh, increasing liquid supply. Uh, that is just, you know, uh, the Bitcoin that is out and available for purchasing. Maybe this is from uh, the miners that it's, it's available. Then in the red is all of the decreasing liquid supply, I meaning if it's not liquid, someone is, uh, is stocking up on it. And that's exactly what's going on. And you can see over 2018, 2019, there were some big pieces here. But now as we go past, remember really about uh, March 2020, remember that's when we had that black swan event where everything just fell down through the, the bottom. And we saw a pretty big uptick of people uh, hoarding it, hoarding Bitcoin. And then now we're taking a look as we go forward into June, July. October 2020, and now we're at the present day. 
we've got a lot of Bitcoin that is being illiquid. There is just being holed up. So the question then becomes, well, what the heck is going on? Because the price itself hasn't really done much and actually is down from 59,000. So what's happening? Well, if you take a look at the chart again, uh, before there was a lot of hoarding, a lot of uh, people putting it into cold storage, but you have to remember, well, first of all, people will always tell me the same thing. Rob, you understand, uh, this market's different. Tons of institutions, solid hands, diamond hands, sure. You have to understand I have the same problem, which is I always believe people are like me and they're not. So we're gonna talk about that in the survey. You have to understand that uh, people are gonna take profits, people are greedy, people are gonna manipulate, and even for every one Michael Saylor diamond hands out there, there is a hundred weak-handed, greedy manipulator, however you want to call them, uh, out there that are just in here for uh, just a quick buck. And they're going to move things around, and that is it. So even though we have a pretty good uh, indication of that there's a lot that is becoming illiquid, and I think as time goes on through education, people actually understand what cryptocurrency, digital assets, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, uh, v chain everything with that that we talk about what it's actually going to do to change the world and change you know it's a new paradigm shift imagine what imagine remember what happened with when the internet came about i'm old so i remember those days uh before the internet there was this thing called a dewey decimal system and you had to go to like the library and look up information you actually had to write letters instead of email oh and you actually had to go shopping for stuff instead of having it delivered to your house it was crazy times crazy so I don't think people understand exactly what's going on and how important this is. So they're just kind of going through the motions. Again, I think people are going to lock things up. But for right now, people just don't get it. And you, you, my friend, are super early. And I don't care what people say. You go on the street. You know about Bitcoin? Yeah, I know about Bitcoin. You know about Dogecoin? I've heard about Dogecoin. You know about Cardano? You know about Ethereum? Do you know about Chainlink? Do you know about spill in the blank? They have no idea. And it's the same thing if you were gonna walk around the street in the early 90s and talk about email and HTTPS and PCP IP, or TCP IP, TCP, TCP IP. People know, I have no idea. So again, these are just the rough points, um, not financial advice, but I'm gonna be holding for the long term. Uh, and uh, I think this, gonna, this year is going to be fireworks. Just like we always talk about the four year cycles, having all time high, dip, reset. There was a halving not too long ago in 2020. 2021 is an all-time high. 2022 is a dip. 2023 is a reset. And off we go. Let me understand the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. So next up, I just did a live AMA with Sheehan Chandrakara. He's the uh, CPA and specializes in cryptocurrency. It was great. A lot of great questions we had. And uh, I'll link that at the very end. It's about 45 minutes, about 50, yeah, about 50 minutes. And it's a lot of great information uh, as far as like taxes, as far as Americans go. If you're outside of America, we talk a little bit about uh, things outside of that, but that's not really Xi'an's specialty, but it was still pretty good. So this was a article he wrote yesterday where he says, hey, and we talked about this in the AMA, there is a document that is going to be put out um, for US taxpayers. And I'm just gonna go over this really quick. In the 1040, it's going to ask you, and it's going to be at the very top, it's going to say, hey, have you received, sold, sent, exchanged, or otherwise acquired any financial interest in any virtual currency during 2020? And in this article, Xi'an says, if you purchase cryptocurrency in fiat, you, do not, you can still answer this no. And he explains exactly why in the AMA. And he talks about the reason why is because they updated the FAQ on the cryptocurrency uh, as of March 2nd, 2021. He caught it. And because of the way that they, as the IRS actually said it, you can say no, as long as you haven't sold that cryptocurrency, transferred it for another cryptocurrency, done some type of airdrop or things like that. If you just bought it in fiat and you bought Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, whatever else it is, and hasn't done anything, you've not acquired virtual currency. Crazy, right? These are the types of things that's uh, important when you have a CPA. So I will link this article in the description. I will link the AMA and you can figure it, uh, find all about that. But the way that he explained it, and I'll let him talk about it, this is a uh, no question if you have only bought and held. So interesting. Anyhow, that's what's going on.